So, Metal Warriors, welcome to the 10th interview here in the channel, here in Iron Madness. This is unbelievable, it's a dream. And for this special occasion, we have um, someone really special for me because I started in metal listening to, to some bands, but one of those bands was Angra. So, our special guest today is Rafael Bittencourt from Angra. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Hello, Sergi. It's nice to be here, man. How's it going? Really good. I'm fine and, and ready, ready to start. Hope you too. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, so um, you are the guest number 10 here in the channel, and that's something nice. special. But as always, I have to start with a personal question to know more about you, because I want to know why, how did you start listening to metal music or hard rock, whatever? Well, um, I don't know. It was it was back in the 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. My first metal record was The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. And nice. I, um, I just fell in love with it. I was in a very religious school. Mm -hmm. It was a Catholic school run by nuns. And, and when I saw that cover artwork, you know, that really um, shocked me, you know, because I thought that it was prohibited, you know? Yeah. How would someone do that kind of cover? So I was very interested on the whole concept around metal. And then came Black Sabbath, and then came... Um, back then, in the, in the early 80s, everything mm -hmm. was heavy metal. Like, Van Haley was heavy metal, Kiss was heavy metal, ACDC was heavy metal because, you know, Angus Young with those horns yep. and kids with those masks, everything was a uh, heavy metal. Later in the 80s and is that metal started to, you know, branch out in different um, genres uh, or subgenres. But um, uh, I fell in love with the concept, with the power, the energy, you know, and I, I really identified myself with, with that. I wanted to be a metal musician. Uh -huh. Great start and, and good story. Now let's go uh, and let's start uh, talking about Cycles of Pain, of course. Okay. And before entering and start talking about songs or whatever you would like to, to talk, I wanted to, to share an opinion and, and I want to hear you because I, I saw that um, in previous years you released an album um, i mean it's two years more or less and then you released aqua in 2010 and since then uh, you left like a four year gap and you released secret garden then another four years and omni and now five years in that we have been longing for cycles of pain so i don't know if you have thought about this if you are not obsessed and you release albums when you want, when you like, when you have the the, the songs in your mind. But uh, I mean, uh, I saw that now you're living more years of space. I don't know if you you really you, you realize that. Uh, yeah, I mean, in this case, it took a little bit a little bit longer because of the pandemics, obviously. Okay. But yes, we usually take like three to four years to write a new album. Mm -hmm. We tour a lot with these albums, you know. It, yeah. it, it's a lot of work to write an album, to record an album, to put it out, to mm -hmm. promote it, and to get people to know about it. So for us, and also for us that we live here in Brazil, mm -hmm. we uh, it's always hard to organize a tour in, in America, a tour in Europe, a tour in Japan, Asia, yeah. all South America. So for us, it usually takes three to four years to do the whole round of writing an album, uh -huh. promoting it, and touring. And yeah, of course, I, everything, it's hard. So I just wanted to, to point that. I think it's okay. it's curious. And now about the the songs and the, the feelings of the album, uh, let's get into the material. Um, years ago, when Kiko left, some people said that probably Angra was going to change a little bit the sound. But years passes, and we have a new album right now. And, and Angra is still Angra with with your sound, and that's fantastic. So 
you are still uh, doing what you did before. And, and I wanted to know if you are the member with the most weight in, in composition because not mm, a lot of things changed from, from that years. Yeah, um, when Kiko left, it was very important for me to prove to people, to prove to our fans mm -hmm. that, you know, we still have a core here on creativity and writing songs. Felipe Andreoli was getting more and more into it and writing songs with me. So we wrote a lot of songs together. And for us, it's very important to point out that with, especially with Cycles of Pain, our newest one, yep. that um, it it's not about the individuals, you know, Angra is not about individual musicians, you know? Yes. It, uh -huh. It's more like a group thing, you know? You were talking about how long it took for us to to write a new album. That is because we need to be together. We're very old fashioned, old school in that sense. We need to be together and, and jam ideas out. It's not like many bands nowadays, they do everything on a computer. They start out a song in a computer, mm -hmm. they, they record right there, and they will perform that song together many times after the album is is being released you know in yeah. our case we need l like a musical laboratory mm -hmm. to try out stuff to really jam out together to try out ideas in order to to build up a song you know um so it's it's more a collective work than an individual thing yes i am a one of the main composers in the band but uh -huh. I my 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 writing skills is very close to producers too you know because many yes. times I'm, or, I'm organizing uh, someone else's idea I, I heard and I and I read that some people uh, says this album is probably more progressive um, than power. I think it's more in a middle way mixed as Angra usually does it, uh, rock and power. But some people say that that is um, in their opinion more progressive or at least with more pure progressive songs. I wanted uh, to know if you could set. Uh, the album in just a genre or as usually in a mixed way uh, we listen to you all right okay well uh, it's always hard to label Angra because mm. we experiment a lot of different genres together with our music but it's basically a progressive metal band with symphonic and Brazilian um, influence mm -hmm. okay but we have obviously we have songs like Here in the Now in our new album. It's very much influenced by bands like Total, Tears for Fears, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of the, the progressive rock from the 70s and the, and the 80s in our music too. Not only the, the, the modern progressive metal bands, but also Genesis, Rush, and Yes. All of those old guys, they influence us a lot. And specifically, I wanted to, to talk about Tears of Blood. It's cool. a cool song, it's a different song. Uh, you you have a, a guest in that song, right? Uh, yeah. It's it's Amanda, if, if I'm Amanda right. Amanda Somerville, yeah. Uh -huh. And you also have a piano in that song, I guess? Yeah, we have uh -huh. a piano there. Singing in a different way too. So it's a special and, and Angra Essence song. What can you tell us about that song? Well, I have always wanted to, to write a song for Fabio to sing in his operatic way. Mm -hmm. He has a very nice tenor, yeah. Italian tenor voice, and I have always wanted to show that off. But um, uh, I, 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 could, I never got to write a song that would be proper for his voice. And this time I could 
I wrote a song. Uh, it's supposed to be a duet, right? Mm-hmm. And that duet is between the killer of his beloved one mm-hmm. and the spirit, the ghost of that beloved one coming back to haunt him. So it's like a dialogue between the assassin and his own guilt, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Uh, so it's very dramatic, uh, the melodies and all the, the harmonies, I made it very dramatic, very much inspired on the Phantom of the Opera, and also on, uh, I've toured with Tarja Turunen recently, in, to, uh, in 2020, I've toured with her, mm-hmm. and I also got very, and she sings very operatic. Yeah. And so I inspired myself a lot on her kind of harmonies, her kind of songwriting, to mm-hmm. write that song. I mean, for me, it's it's the the essence of Angra to have these uh, different songs, special ones, uh, those ones that mm, you you feel like like yours, if if you like the style and everything. So uh, um, one of the magic ones for me. Good to know, man. Thank you. Now about uh, the style of the album, but not not the style. I wanted to just to point the the way that. Uh, you mixed with uh, some Brazilian music and with some orchestral sounds. And for me, I mean, it's 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 not new in Angra, but I can understand people who's who's new and who's start listening to uh, your band. Uh, it could be at least new and different, right? But um, but that's but that's your wave. That's your your music and it's not new but it's always good to to see those uh aspects you you get into your album so i don't know if you could uh tell us about that uh, at least that brazilian um touch that you try always to put i mean it's like your roots yeah uh i always say that i like my we like our music to be deep and meaningful to people. Mm -hmm. We like to touch people more than impress them by the Mm -hmm. way we play, right? Yes, many times we look for sophistication, but sophistication is directly connected to elegance. Uh And elegance is not about uh, the quantity of elements, you know, but how aligned they are. Uh, So, to, to reach that depth, we we need to, to go deep in ourselves. <coughs> and it, 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 there's no way to go deep inside myself without reaching my Brazilian side, my of Brazilian course. influences. Um, so we have a kind of a recipe to write mm-hmm. an album. We know that we're going to write a power metal song we, we're going to go through progressive parts. Yeah. We know that kids like fast movements, high-pitched vocals. They like energy, they like sh- shred guitars. But in the very end, what we want to deliver is something that would transform the way they think, transform the way they feel, transform the way they see things in life, Mm-hmm. and touch them deeply. So it that's why it takes so long for us to write an album, you mm-hmm. know? Because you really need to experiment, to try out stuff, to throw many things away, mm-hmm. throw out a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas for songs because they just didn't work. Uh, and the Brazilian thing is a natural element in our music is it it, it, we don't actually we need to to put more effort trying to avoid it to be too brazilian all the time Mm -hmm. than to edit you know because it's very very natural for us to come out with a brazilian a brazilian music brazilian song more than a power metal song Mm -hmm. of course of course so songs that comes from deep inside right you're right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as well, well, you you don't know, but I can tell you that I'm not a, an expert. I'm not a musician, so I can't 
talk about uh, technical things, specific things about the album, but I, I'm sure people would love to hear your personal recommendation, not the song that it's um, the hit of the album, your personal, the, the one you you are you liking the most right now, you feel it more right now, and that would be perfect. All right, I'd say Vida Seca is a song that we start with lyrics in Portuguese mm -hmm. with a special guest, uh, Lenini. Lenini is a Brazilian yeah. artist. He's very famous here in Brazil. He's multi uh, Latin Grammy awarded. And um, then it becomes a bit heavier and then yeah. with, a, with a epic chorus, a nice solo and a nice instrumental part. So I think we could start, that represents a lot what we are, what we want to express and the combination of Brazilian music with metal. Vida Seca. Uh, now you you told us your personal recommendation from your last album, but for the upcoming fans, from the new people that starts listening to Angra, do you have a recommendation for them? Probably um, a catchy one. I don't know that you think it's the good one, right. the appropriate to start. Okay. Well, if if the person is more into uh, power metal. I'd suggest to listen to Spread Your Fire. Spread Your Fire is a good one. Yeah. If he is more into progressive stuff, mm -hmm. he could go for Omni Silence Inside or maybe um, The Shadow Hunter. Okay, of course. Okay, mm -hmm. Shadow Hunter is a good one for those who like uh, the progressive side. Well, we also have more more melodic and classic stuff like Deep Blue, you know, mm -hmm. from from Holy Land. There's a nice song that blends Brazilian music and power metal, which is Carolina the Four. Uh huh. You can look for that one, Carolina the Four. Uh, well, that's a pretty good start. If you mm -hmm. list those four, and you still don't like it. You don't like Angra at all. <laughs> that that would be a pity. <laughs> yeah, that would be a pity. But if you like power and progressive metal, you you certainly find good songs there on our 30 years of music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which with band would you like to make a collaboration? I mean, an artist or a band, but which one would you like to collaborate with? Well, I love Leprous. Oh. I love Contortionist. Mm -hmm. I really love um, Periphery. Also, um, Muse. 
great yeah. band to use. So that would be great. But and also I mean uh yeah I have some old time heroes but most of them are dead. So And now I want to know what was the last concert, the last show you went paying the ticket? Paying for the ticket. Yeah. What concert have I been paying for the ticket? Well, I think it was Paul McCartney. Okay, nice one. Uh huh. I think I paid for the tickets to see David Gilmour too. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I paid again. <laughs> they they confirmed me that we were going to do the interview today, the same day as you you released the news that you were that you're going to come here to Spain. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I, I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. You're, you're coming here um, next year in March and that's absolutely fantastic. I want to know if you can tell us more or less what can we expect about the tour. I guess uh, Cycles of Pain mostly, but you will tell better than me. Well, yeah, we'll probably be playing lots of songs from Cycles of Pain and then Uh, probably like one or two songs from each other album mm -hmm. and uh, well yeah we're very excited to be back in Spain of course we, we, too. we were supposed to play in Z-Fest in yes. Zamora but it rained so bad that we couldn't it was cancelled like in the very last minute yeah. so we kind of felt disappointed frustrated that we wanted to play for the Spanish crowd so next year we will have the chance we have yeah. five days there in Spain and that's just awesome because every time you've been to Spain it's a nice experience I and mean, people are awesome food is awesome beer <laughs> everything so <laughs> everything forward to be back in Spain so yeah I'm very excited we're going to have a lot of fun it's going to be tough because it's like one concert after the other uh -huh. but it's going to be very nice So it's Madrid on the 13th, Vigo on the 14th, Gijón on the 15th, Bilbao on the yeah. 16th, and to to finish up with Glory, Barcelona <laughs> on the 17th. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to see you guys. This is uh, the third album uh, for Fabio Leone. Yeah. And I wanted to know a little bit about uh, why did you choose him? I mean, because not everybody can sing in Angra. It's it's a band that, uh, I mean, it's it's difficult. You you can't choose anyone in the world because not everybody could do it. So it's a hard work and you choose Fabio Leone, which is, uh, of course, doing it very, very well. And I wanted to know a little bit of the story about that, if you if you knew Uh, about his hard work in composition or you looked for other things how was that it was a natural uh, it was a natural process mm -hmm. first of all I mean after Edu left the band me and Kiko we were very frustrated and tired you know because after so many years and uh, of struggle and replacing the singer and everything we were very tired and frustrated that we didn't have a singer. We thought about uh, finishing the band, you know. Then one day, Kiko received a call from the producers of the 70,000 Tons of Metal, uh, which is a cruise, you know, yeah. with lots of metal bands. They, they, it's a cruise that leads from Miami to Bahamas and lots of metal bands from everywhere in the world. He wanted to hire Angra. So Kiko said, well, um, we don't have a singer. And he said, well, I don't care. I'm, I don't care about the singer. I, I care about the music, about the songs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, I have, and I have a friend of mine, yeah. Fabio Leone. He's going to be in the cruise because he's a friend of mine. He's coming to the cruise already. So uh -huh. what if you guys come to Miami like one or two days before? rehearse all the songs and join the cruise with Fabio as a guest. Uh, we, we were so excited. Um, okay, we went to the cruise, we rehearsed with Fabio and it was a very nice experience. 
the cruise itself, the concerts, uh, many people from many places in the world, they have never seen Angra before. So seeing Angra with Fabio was their first impression about the band. And many people said, well, I love your band. I love your singer, man. How, for how long have you guys been together? I said, well, this is the first gig we've done with him. We had one rehearsal back in Miami and, and this is it. <laughs> wow. So, it was very surprising for us too, you know, how easily he blended with the with the band, with the music, with ourselves, you know, as as friends. And then we decided to write an album together, which was Secret Garden. Uh -huh. Fabio was still not very much in the band. He was like he still had Rhapsody of Fire, he still had other projects. So after the tour of Secret Garden, Fabio left um Rhapsody of Fire and he said on an interview Mm -hmm. that he would be focusing 100% in anger. I was very thrilled and happy. And so we wrote a new album together, which was Omni. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We had a lot of Fabio's participation. Fabio, uh, Fabio's input was very important on the vocal lines and, you know, ideas for, yeah. for everything. It's, it's very creative and very sensitive. Then it really made it even stronger. So it took like 10 years for Fabio to really feel like he's 100% in it. And now we have like this feeling that uh, this is the best lineup ever. The mm -hmm. way we feel together, the way we have a bonds of respect yeah. and admiration and friendship. All of that makes a whole of a difference on when it comes to 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 write an album. Mm -hmm. oh, that was a fantastic and incredible story, I have to say. I have a question, and I don't know if you want to answer, but because uh, Kiko Loredo has left Megadeth, and some people said, well, probably someday he could return to Angra. I don't know if he has uh, opened doors. Uh, from the band, he has, um, he is, he's got open doors. We're still close friends. We're still partners. We still have lots of uh, records together to manage. So we have me and Kiko. We're partners in a company. We're mm -hmm. partners on, on a company that rules all the records uh, for Angra. Mm -hmm. And we're still very close friends. But I don't think he would come back to Angra. But there's there's a big chance for him to take part on a special moment, you know, on a special concert, maybe a festival mm -hmm. in Portland, or maybe a important concert in Japan or something. So, yes, he's got open doors, and I believe he will probably join on special celebrations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and of course. In March, in in March or marzo. Yeah. Vemos también en marzo en España celebrando el salida de Cycles of Pain, amigos. Yeah. Eh, estoy muy contento. Estoy muy contento de volver a España. Buy the album. Los compre, amigos. Los yeah. Compre. Los compre el físico también. Está buenísimo. Do it right now, right now. <laughs> ah, sí, 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 los compré ahora, pronto. Yeah. Pronto. Right now. Metal Warriors, nos vemos en la próxima.